sort of nature sign of Jesus walking across the water at night, remember? And the, the disciples are in the boat, they went out ahead of him at night, and he was left on land, and they see him walking towards them on the water, and as if he was going to go by. And they see him, and they're astonished and afraid, and he says, do not be afraid, it is I. That's the English translation, what he really says is, do not be afraid, I am. That name, I am, which is the name of God in the Old Testament from Exodus chapter 3. Yahweh is, is literally I am, or I, I am he who is. And Jesus has appropriated that name so that he speaks as God. And he often seems to be God walking around. Or he often seems to be the already glorified Jesus walking on the earth and speaking from that, from that divine depth. That's just another one of the signs which has infinite infinite depths of, and ex expansions of meaning in it, because it, it recalls the Exodus experience and the moving across the, the Red Sea, of course, out into freedom. But it also recalls the first creation, okay? When God said, let there be light, and there was light in the darkness, and that I am of Jesus, that ego in me in the Greek is the light shining in the darkness and dispersing all darkness. I've manifested your name to the people that you gave to me out of the world. Your name, the name, remember the name is I am ultimately in the Old Testament, the name of God. So he's manifested that to them. What does that mean, telling them the name? No, it means giving them the reality that the name represents. And he does that first of all by telling them the name, as it were, by assuming the name himself and then giving it to them. You know, there's only one person in the, in the Gospel of John that says, I am, besides Jesus. You've got two people that say, I am not, very emphatically. One is John the Baptist and the other is Peter, Jesus of the Apostles, when he, de when he denies Jesus out of fear in the courtyard of, who is it, Caiaphas. There's only one person that says, I am, in John's Gospel, besides Jesus. That name belongs to him. And guess who that is? It's the man born blind. Now remember the man born blind. They came across him and, and uh, noticed him and they said, well, was he born blind because he sinned or because he couldn't have sinned or because his parents sinned? And Jesus says, not that he or his parents sinned, but that the glory of God might be manifested. And then he rubs mud in his eyes. Okay, takes spittle and, and dirt and makes mud, rubs it in his eyes and tells him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. Washing, pool, what does that mean? It means baptism, okay? So symbolically, he's, he's sending him to baptism, this man born blind. And so he goes and he washes and he sees. His eyes are open and he sees. He's been blind all his life and he sees. That's baptism once again, okay? And then he comes back. He comes back towards Jesus. And meanwhile, people uh, find him and they try to talk him out of his cure. They try to talk him out of his healing. Because uh, even his parents, want, they say, well, ask him, you know. He's old enough. He's of age. He should be able to tell you. Because the, the Orthodox, that is, scribes and Pharisees and so on, contend that this cannot, this healing cannot have been performed by Jesus. Okay? So you're not the same guy that was sitting there begging, are you? He says, I am. Only place you find it, except in the, in the words of Jesus. It's marvelous. I went, I washed, I see, I am. It's wonderful. So that one representation in the Gospel of John communicates the passing on, almost literally, of that, of that gift of non-duality to us, the I am.